We are PBS. program was made possible by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you. <laughs> Two candidates, the Boston Brahmin and the Texas Cowboy. This November, only one will survive. You're fired. <laughs> On the premiere episode of this fall's hottest new reality series, what will it take to win the country's most important job? On this TV show, it's all about image, style, and spin. This week on Tucker Carlson Unfiltered, Face Off Miami. The reviews are in. Bush's clumsiness with, with, the, with the language and his very original syntax sometimes may actually be a plus in certain ways in the way people see him, in his total image. And you thought the candidates were well prepared. How's this for mastering the trivia? American colonists called this monarch German Georgie. Tucker was King George. Which one? Give me a number. There was more than one. <laughs> Useless knowledge, random facts, and obscure information. Not just for television hosts anymore. A.J. Jacobs read the entire Encyclopedia Britannica. On our back page, his quest to become the smartest man in the world. I learned all sorts of crazy stuff. I learned uh, uh, that opossums have 13 nipples. And joining Tucker in our Plus Two segment, Washington Post columnist Richard Cohen and Danny Minton Beddoes of The Economist magazine. From Washington, Fearless Television, Tucker Carlson, Unfiltered. Tucker Carlson. An estimated 55 million people watched the first presidential debate Thursday night, and according to the many instant polls conducted in its aftermath, a lot of them thought John Kerry scored more points. Kerry was more specific in his critiques, more detailed in his prescriptions. But that doesn't mean he won. Because presidential debates aren't like the ones you remember from high school. They're television events, and that's mostly the point. The object is not to out-reason your opponent, but to outshine him. I am not going to exploit for political purposes my opponent's youth and inexperience. It's not a contest of logic, but of men. Which is the more appealing leader? In that way, presidential debates aren't so different from the usual network lineup in primetime. This is the ultimate reality TV. And that's the way we plan to talk about it today. And who better to talk about it with than the country's most influential and occasionally most pungent television critic, Tom Shales, who for 30 years has covered the tube for the Washington Post and won a Pulitzer Prize in the process. Tom Shales, thanks a lot for joining us. Nice how do you know, who, when you're writing about this, you're doing your column, working up your column, late debate night, how do you decide who won? Well, uh, partly decide who didn't lose. You know, the, it's, a, it's kind of a negative scoring system, I think, that we all use on this thing, this unique medium, presidential debates. Who didn't, uh, you know, stumble over their words? Who didn't misspo misspeak? Who didn't say uh, uh, there's no uh, communism in Eastern Europe or whatever Ford said years ago? So in part, it's you get you get points for not uh, screwing up. I was actually rereading uh, today so your your columns from 2000 when Bush took on Gore, oh. and it was pretty much uh, it was similar to what you wrote today because Bush was similar then to the way he was uh, in this week's debate. He has trouble speaking. The English yeah. language, and yet it doesn't seem to hurt him. What do you make of that? So Bush's uh, Bush's clumsiness with with the with the language and his very original syntax sometimes may actually be a plus in certain ways in the way people see him in his total image. Pundits in the world of punditry, there may be too much emphasis on uh, on Bush's. Uh, 
uh, sort of recklessness with the English language. You know, I was told that years ago at uh, Harvard uh, f faculty meetings, they would read the uh, transcripts of Eisenhower's press conferences, his answers to questions, uh, and laugh and laugh and roar with laughter at his bad English, his bad grammar. And who was more beloved than Eisenhower? Did the public think of Eisenhower as a, you know, a bumbler with a language? Not at all. They thought of him as a regular guy, uh, a hero, certainly, but, you know, kind of Uncle, Uncle Ike. This video brought to you by Stockagogo.com, Stock Photos.